Good evening, folks. Welcome inside the Luke Urban Fieldhouse. Girls basketball, big three action on tap. Great to be back with you at Durfee. Evan Massoud and Zach Souza. Zach catching one more game before heads back for the spring semester at UMass Dartmouth. And uh, tonight is middle school night. We see a bunch of the uh, middle school players here from around the city uh, being honored pregame. So that's always fun, too. Yeah, it's fun. That's the future right there. So it's cool to see. You got that right. So uh, tonight on tap, again, big three girls hoops. This is like the biggest game of the year for the girls because New Bedford's in town, and we all know the history of Durfee, New Bedford. Um, Whalers coming in at four and seven. They've lost to Brockton in the big three. And uh, Durfee girls coming in at one and seven. That one win being what we saw at Somerset uh, back in December uh, in our first winter sports game. So uh, Lady Hilltoppers have a lot of work to do. We saw them against this in, uh, last Tuesday against Stang here, and it was a rough game. It was a winnable game. They just could There were a lot of missed shots, a lot of layups that didn't go uh, on open looks, mind you. And, and that was something Coach picked up just like I did during the game. And he says, you've got to finish better. Every time you get the ball, you've got to finish. If you got the ball going to the basket, focus on scoring. Yeah. Definitely, and they've had it rough so far, but there's still time left in the season to maybe turn this around and turn into a more of a positive season. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, again, one and seven, it, that's, that's a tough road to get into the tournament. It's certainly not out of the question. Um, both New Bedford and Durfee 0 and 1 in the big three, so they've both lost to Brockton. Brockton with that commanding 2 nothing, you know, 2 0 record in the big three. You're going to probably have to get in via your overall record, and that means for Durfee, basically winning, you know, nine of their last, uh, what do you got, 12 games. Right. So that, that's a tall that's order. Um, but right now, mathematically, it's not impossible. So um, let's run down the starters. Uh, I'll take New Bedford, Zach, and you can take Durfee. So right. for the Whalers, uh, led by Jordan Pena in his fifth season, number one, Captain Kelsey Resendiz, number 14, the center, Janice Leo, very tall underneath. Look for her to be a player. Uh, number 23, Captain Monica Ayers. Number 24, Savannah Gordon. And number 34, Kennedy Franklin. We're going to get to Durfee right after the Star Spangled Banner. Zach, you're at UMass, and uh, Shailen Carrero, who scored 1,000 points in her four-year career here as a Hilltopper, um, she's there too, and recently just got a nice honor. We were talking about it last week. Uh, Player of the Week yeah. for the uh, Little East, right? Yeah. Not too shabby for a freshman. No, that's <laughs> that's a big honor. To yeah. Get. That's. Yeah, and she and I mentioned that because uh, she is here tonight, as we always see a bunch of alums uh, like yourself coming to these games during winter break, which is quite extended for college. We're already back to normal here. Yeah. But you guys still haven't started spring semester yet, so uh, always good to see the alums. Uh, as promised, we have yep. Durfee starters. Zach, take uh, it away. Durfee starters, we have number two, Mackenzie Carrero. Number three, Ataya Rivera. Number 15, Captain Callahan. Number 21, Anusha Lemian. Number 33, Crystal Diaz. Durfee's lady toppers are led by head coach, Marcel Smith.
The whistle sounds, tip off. Coming up for you, thrilled to have multi-camera shoot here. We've got a full crew at the field house uh, for tonight as well. Uh, Jake Fitzgerald directing, Gary Lead on camera, Carson Amarello on camera, Tyler Texera is gonna be doing some co-directing, co may run some camera as well, so he's kinda you know, floating around for us. So we got a full crew tonight to bring you uh, Girls Hoops on Fred TV. JV lost 31-17, really a slow JV game until the fourth quarter. I think halftime, it was, what was it like 10 to six or something? It yeah, was nine, really, four, something. it was very, very low scoring. Picked up a bit later in the game. Um, New Bedford put it away. They had pretty strong fourth quarter. Uh, so the Lady Whalers took JV, and now Varsity looking to do the same. That's put up by Diaz for two. The Hilltoppers open the scoring with points. Packers pass and uh, had to let it go, otherwise it would have been uh, back court and then it ends up going out off of, uh, I think that was Callahan. It went out of, or it might have been a Lemian. No, it was Callahan. Callahan had to go off of her and uh, so New Bedford gets to keep it. Resendi thought of three, going outside to her co-captain Ayers. Ayers, Ayers it out, throws it away. Atia Rivera will inbound for the Hilltoppers. That inbounding pass goes right to the Lady Whalers, Resendiz going to the corner to Gordon. Jump ball. You know, we're touching on the Hilltoppers uh, with, again, the, some of the offensive struggles. Again, that Stang game was really a weird game. Um, I did that one solo, and they were never really out of it. Stang came in with just one, they were, I think they were like seven and one, eight and one, and um, Actually, you know what? It's in the book, so I can tell you now. Hello. Yeah, eight and one. <laughs> and they didn't play like an eight and one team, let me tell you that. And the Hilltoppers didn't play like a team with just one win. Um, it was just kind of almost sloppy all around from both sides. And the Hilltoppers lost it. Uh, it was a close game, 45-38. Seven point lead with the number of missed shots from both sides. It could have gone either way. It was one of those, like, nothing wanted to fall for either side. Yeah. Um, and it was most certainly, my eyes and, and in coach's eyes, a winnable game for Durfee. Um, I think it kind of slipped away late, but that, that goes back to the offensive stuff, though. You gotta finish. You gotta get to the basket, and if you're gonna score, you gotta score. If you have the ball, you're gonna score. You can't just uh, put it up and hope it goes in. Full focus on the basket and the task at hand, and that's something he's looking for. And of course, the defense, they've been really working hard to uh, get better with a you know, one-on-one, -on -one, man to man uh, defense, which is not something the Hilltoppers have always done. That's coach's way of thinking. He wants them to be playing that kind of high test defense, pressure, pressure, pressure. He says, I feel good about it tonight. Well, first two minutes of the game, Hilltoppers have a two nothing lead. They've held the Whalers scoreless. I don't think the Whalers really have had one shot on that. No, they haven't even had <laughs> a good, good shot attempt yet. Durfee seems to be doing what I've seen a couple of times. They seem to be trapping in the corners a lot, which could really help them. First foul of the Knights on Monica Ayers, and Diaz is at the line shooting two. She did miss the first. Misses the second as well. Leo boxing out, using her height, and got that rebound. Good feed to Resendi, thrown away. Atia Rivera was there. Timeout called by Coach. Great quick call right there. Keep possession, otherwise probably would have been a jump ball. Right. So just over two minutes in, our first timeout. A necessary timeout as we, uh, you know, Coach seeing that the Hilltoppers needed help with possession and going to preserve it with the timeout. Hilltoppers defense seems to be doing good right now, though. So I think it's got a nice steal right there. They've been seen to be on them so far. Yeah, I mean, again, it's early. We'll see right. how it see how it goes through the game, but yes, uh, we like what we're seeing so far. Yeah. Again, the only basket, uh, Crystal Diaz, number 33, she put 
she opened the scoring um, and then missed those last two free throws. So she's the only one right now. Um, and, you know, if JV's any indication, it may be a low-scoring night. We'll see how things pan out. Buzzer sounds. We're back to the action here. Hilltoppers got to inbound it. Atia Rivera. Weaving her way around everybody to the basket and doesn't get it to fall. Slaps it out. No foul, and she takes it right back. Love the energy. <laughs> right oh, I back do on it. I do too. But, you know, the layups, and this was one of the things in the you know the staying game. Uh, you know, Rivera had a hard time getting some of those layups to fall for three. Diaz. She had a hard time with some of those open look layups. She just kind of hurled it up and didn't get a good feel on it. And uh, I'm hopeful for her sake that she can, uh, you know, maybe turn around a little bit because that was a very frustrating night for her uh, against Bishop Stang. Uh, she only had, she had seven points, added a couple layups late in the game, but um, four of the seven points came in that fourth quarter. So it was, it was a, a long night, I would say, for Atia. She's had, she's had some games, you know, where she's up 15 points, and that goes back to last year. Um, she can be very dangerous underneath, but last couple games, I don't know, the release point, or just not getting a good look at it, but quick in body pass. Alemian definitely, uh, some contact. Yeah, most certainly her arm. Wow. Hilltopper is going to pick up their first foul on offense. Catherine Callahan gets called on it. One of the basket, no good. The put back is no good. And the Hilltop, no, Leo comes away with it. That time's going to go out of play. Durfee ball. Pick up, pick up. Right, Don't the defense def the, definitely quicker um, than last Tuesday against Stang, for sure, a week and a half ago. Uh, the Stang game, mind you, because you folks are seeing it. This is a Friday night game, folks. You're seeing it on Tuesday after the Martin Luther King weekend here. So it was Tuesday the 8th, so about you know almost two full weeks ago now, basically, since uh, that game. And uh, Durfee's defense looks quite a bit quicker um, than against Stang. And New Bedford's playing quicker than Stang was, I can tell you that, too. This game is very fast paced, up and down, up and down. Yeah. Very high energy from both sides. Hope Durf can keep it consistent, though. That's the only way that's going to help them in the end, is they can keep the consistency up. Gil Marie Vasquez, number 11. She's a freshman in there now. And uh, Coach Pina telling me she's actually from Fall River. So New Bedford stealing away a. Potential Durfee player. That was almost a carry from Matias. She got away with one there. Rebound foul. Mayette going to shoot two. But, uh, yeah, this roster, if you look at New Bedford's side, a couple freshmen on varsity. Coach really likes the balance. You know, they got, you know, some experience. Monica Ayers is one. Janice Leo. Um, Resendiz, of course. Sakara Furland is from uh, New Bedford. Volk. She's a senior. She made the switch over to here. Um, th there's some good talent on this team for the Whalers. We get our first look at them. Leo is fouled. That's going to be a huge height advantage for New Bedford. Oh, yeah. She is very tall. That foul is on Atia Rivera, both sides with two. Vasquez, Ooh. the freshman, puts it up for two, and the Whalers are on the board. But yeah, like I said, Coach Pina, very excited about the Whalers team here. They're definitely young. They have some experience, and then they also have some of that youth. So that's kind of the balance that any coach, you know, probably hopes for. Good feed underneath, and that goes over the basket. Vasquez is there on the other side, loses the ball. We may see it jump ball, and we do. Should be going Durfee's. Oh, I was going towards New Bedford. Yeah, Durfee had the last one. I Actually. always lose track. <laughs> I, I do too. For some reason that one stuck in my mind. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Out of bounds. Oh, and it's going to be Durfee ball. Ooh. No. I'm a little surprised. I thought that was Whaler ball. Yeah, I thought we had tapped it out. Mm. The Hilltoppers get possession on... Uh, Maybe a home call, we'll say. 
Oh, that was almost a travel from uh, Carrero. Did not get the shot up. That's for three in the tie. No good and out of play. The, uh, yeah, Carrero didn't get set there. And I think if she had gotten set, probably could have gotten a little more on it. It wasn't high enough, the arc, to get in the basket. But Carrero going to bring it out. Following Callahan. Gets it to Callahan. Good feet no. underneath. Is it? Ooh. Is Rivera for you? Nice that's underneath the, that. That's wow. the bread and butter right there. And that was a good look. Able to bank it in. When she, that's what I mean. When she just throws it straight up and kind of loops it in, I, I almost feel like she does better when it hits the glass. That's for two. And I believe that was uh, Gaylord just in off the bench, number three. Kind of got screened a little bit there. Rivera trying to bank it in that time. No, going to get the rebound back. Gets it out to Callahan. Nice second effort from Rivera. Easily, oh, that's a travel. Rivera easily overmatched when you consider the height difference with her and Leo, uh, Leo when they get near each other. But, you know, Rivera's quicker to the ball if it's on the ground. So there's, yeah. <laughs> there's advantages right. for both sides. A lot quicker. Stolen, Carrero. Fouled and one. And you know what? That that foul from Vasquez. That that's to me some of the freshman inexperience here. Let it. it it's you're six minutes into the game. Let it take the shot. Not a don't call. Foul. You know what I mean? There's no need um, to foul in that situation, especially given the. This, you know, the height difference and everything, you're not going to get to the ball. Right. You're going to grab the forearm, if anything, you know. The end one, no good. Nine to four, Hilltoppers. Going to the corner to Gaylor. Gaylor puts it up, no good. Leo reaching with the long arms out to Ayers for three. That one wide to the right, and the Hilltopper is going to come away with it. Carrero, two on one. Diamond Gerald in there with some help. Going to lose the ball. Oh. And Carrero getting called on a foul. An interesting call considering she was tumbling on the ground. Those are the hardest to see. I mean, you know, we got the bench, and then you got players standing, you got coach standing. It's very difficult to see a foul on the floor like that. Diamond Gerald just in the game. She's picking up her first, fourth team foul, and the Whalers will take their first shots from the line. And that is number 22. That's Andrea Sakira. And she's subbed in as well. So a couple bench players in there for Coach Pina of the Whalers, and the first one misses. So, so far between both sides here, uh, a lot of missed free throws. That one goes. That's the first made free throw in uh, seven tries between the two teams. Carrero, no foul, all ball. She got all the way through traffic and then just couldn't put it up. That's off the side of the glass. Two on one. Oh, look at that. Look at Leo just come in and take it away. India, one time. To the rim. Look in. Attack, attack. She's been very impressive. Gerald tipping it away. And a foul. Leo picking up her first foul. Four for both sides here as we are in the final minute of the first. Good first quarter so far. A lot of defense. Yeah, yeah, low scoring, a lot of turnovers, but a lot of those turnovers have been forced on defense, not necessarily sloppy play. Right. Um, which is always good to see. Look at that steal from <laughs> Leo. Are you kidding me? All the way down the court. Furland is there. Gonna end around, throws it away. That's. That's a bad turnover. Both teams dealing with turnover trouble. Uh, on the season, that was almost a self-pass, and it's actually a travel. Um, New Bedford, according to Coach, is averaging 30 turnovers a game. That's a lot of turnovers. You've got to protect the ball better. 
that could be probably the main source of their losing skid, Lose, only having uh, four wins, four yeah. and seven. That could probably change the whole record around you, get that number down. No, you, that that's is, very true. That is insane. You got to protect the ball. Anytime you have the ball and you give it away, you don't come away with points. Uh, you're only hurting yourself. So that's absolutely true. Gerald comes flying in. Ayers underneath oh. Leo all alone. Her first basket, it's a two point game. Seven seconds on the clock. Carrero crossing half court. Three seconds on the clock. One, gotta take a shot. It is off and it is good! <laughs> oh man, how about that? Wow. You kidding me? <laughs> Well, that's one for the highlight reel. Holy cow. Wow. <laughs> Gotta love it. That was Gotta awesome. Gotta love it. <laughs> we saw this. Um, we did Diamond Boys on Monday. And uh, Tyler was with me at Diamond for that one. Diamond and Conley at Diamond. And I'm telling you, this was probably the best game, most fun I've had calling a basketball game in probably two years at least. <laughs> I I'm not kidding. They ended the third quarter with a buzzer three, just like that. Yeah. And it was like an impossible shot because it was a turnover with literally like one and a half seconds on the clock. And they ended the third. Viveris hit the three. They're up by six. And then that's not even the whole story is they went up. They started the fourth with an 8 nothing run. They went up 54 to 40. And then Conley, just one loss on the season, with 5.55 to play, put up 28 points. They ended up winning the game. They came all the way back. It was an incredible second yeah. half, like, like something I've never seen before. I mean, really, it was really something. Complete turnaround. Oh, you said it, yeah. without a doubt. Wow. 12 to seven after that. Fantastic. Maybe a little luck involved. <laughs> Three-pointer for Carrero, but you know, the scorebook doesn't determine luck. It's just a three. And it was uh, great. She got the shot off even better. It went in for Durfee. So a five-point lead to start the second quarter. Diaz shooting the outer. Outside shot, no good. She's got five, and McKenzie has five. And Ayers for three. That one very long and no good. Passing out, ooh, thought, thought of a three. Instead the bank shot from Furland to tie it. A five nothing run here in the first 60 seconds for the Whalers to start the second quarter. Outside here, off balance shot from Soares, not very good. That one had way too much on it. That's for three. No good, and a little starter step when she was getting set. Some nights that's a travel. Yeah. Could have easily been called a travel. Mm -hmm. I've seen it many times. Loose ball thrown away. Hilltoppers with the turnover trouble here in the first 90 seconds of the second quarter. Okay. <laughs> Right. Now, well, now the other direction. I mean, you know, what do you want? Anusha Lemian can't put it up. She's going to get her own rebound and reset. Underneath to Diaz, double teamed, no foul, taken away. Lale on the bench to start the second quarter, in fact. And of course, we started a little late here, just talking to athletic director Brad Buston. Um, Hilltoppers pick up there. Six foul, second for Callahan. Uh, the Durfee boys are down by eight at the half, 27 to 19 in New Bedford. And again, they started on time, so they're already at halftime. Uh, this is real time we're talking here, but <laughs> we'll probably have a result for you on the air before this is done if they were already at halftime, so. Diaz, that's, oh, a foul. Again, she kind of started step two. The, some of these calls, are, uh, 
some of the footwork, I'm watching the yeah. feet and really could go either way in terms of fouls, I'm sorry, uh, travels. There was a foul beforehand, before the whistle. Diaz trying to get her own rebound after just throwing it up there, no good. Loose ball, Durfee gonna get it back. I think those are the shots that Coach Smith is talking about where they're just throwing it up rather than taking a good set shot. Yeah, I mean, and this is, you know, obviously you always want kind of a high pace game. You want to keep the, the flow going. But, uh, you know, for me at the same time, just started the second quarter. I mean, you don't, you want to leave something in the tank for the fourth as well. Play out the game and then, you know, really push later. That, and again, that's just me. That's just my own opinion. I've never coached, so, you know, who am I? I'm just the mouthpiece behind the <laughs> <game>. <laughs> That is no good. Rivera comes away with it. Full steam ahead. Challenge for the basket. Little shoulder Ooh. action and the deuce. Does she get tired? She's just oh, running she back and forth no. all day. She doesn't get tired, <laughs> that's for sure. Wow. It's fun very, to watch. Yeah, she's very quick. Another turnover for New Bedford. Hilltoppers could build on their... Now four point lead, 16 to 12. Out to India Cody, who just came into the game, trying to get around the defender. And, ooh, a quick whistle. That's a quick foul right there on Andrea Sakira, number six for the Whalers, both sides with a half dozen. Ball. Butterfingers, as they say. Pass was just right through him. <laughs> really, it was a good pass. I don't think she was really, I almost feel like she wasn't looking for it, or she didn't see it to the last, something, something was amiss there. It was a perfect pass. And underneath, oh, and a foul. Number seven for Durfee. And it is on Anoush Alimi in her first. And the good news, actually, really both sides spreading out the fouls pretty well. Only one player with two, and that's Catherine Callahan. So 13 fouls in the game, 12 players with fouls. Looks like it's Resendiz. It is. Number one, Resendiz shooting two, and she hits the first. Second, no good. Leo in there for the rebound, and one. What's going on here? Was, oh, no. No basket. It was offensive. <laughs> offensive foul. Okay. So that's that's a big break for Durfee because that could have been a game-tying uh, three-point swing. Right. Halfway through this second quarter, travel. Outside to tie it, that might have been tipped because it didn't leave the hands very good. Just kind of died. <laughs> Did not, it didn't leave her hands cleanly. No, I think one of the Hilltoppers got a hand in there to uh, a fingertip in there, slow it down. I mean, a wide open three definitely has more on it than what we just saw, so. We'll credit the Durfee defense again, which has looked pretty good here in the first half. Yeah, they've looked very good so far, really. Well. Diaz wants a three, and there's one for Diaz. That's her second from downtown. She's got eight points. That one from outside the other end. Leo there to put it back. No, underneath, hit the glass. Diaz, one on one. Flips it up, No, nobody on the other side, and it does not fall. 
That was Rivera. I'm sorry. Did I say Diaz? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Eighth foul for Durfee, first for Diaz. She's the 13th different player with a foul in this game. So one and one now as the uh, Whalers are in bonus. Gordon at the line. No good on the one and one. And the Hilltoppers with the rebound. Furland, her second foul. Seventh for the Whalers, and they're in. Now the Hilltoppers have bonus shots. So Carrero going to the line, one and one. And she hits that all-important first shot. Hilltoppers with 20 points. It's a seven-point lead, their largest lead of the night. Second one good as well. Big, big trip to the line there for Carrero. We're getting toward the end of the first half. Good passing for the Whalers. They get the ball down the court quickly. Going to go all alone. Good defense from Gerald as Gaylord's blocked on her way to the basket. Whalers did a good job of beating the press though, but Gerald is back, back and ready for the fast break. Quick three from Ayers, and it's off the back of the rim. Get on the floor. Oh, a jump ball, no one had control of it. Yeah, I thought that ball, I think that ball was still loose. It was still loose. <laughs> no one had possession. Well, Durfee's going to catch the break, but I don't see how that's a yeah. jump ball when it's still rolling around on the floor. A quick call. Quick to call it. Yeah, really. Oh, nice around the back from Atiyah Rivera. Oh. oh, it doesn't go. Leo breaking. Jumper, no good. Another three attempt. No good. Callahan almost loses it. Spins. It. Oh, almost. Had a good angle and it bounced back out. And now Gaylor with her first foul. Eighth team foul for the Whalers. First shot no good for Callahan. Still looking for her first points of the game. Second one is good. Hilltoppers have given themselves a nine point lead with two minutes to play in the first half. That's a quick three. That one's long. The Whalers not feeling the outside shot. Well, Ayers is going to get a second try at it. Another rebound. Ooh. And uh, that was put in by Furland for two. Nice feed to Gerald. Underneath for <laughs> two. Love what a it. Beautiful pass in motion, too. She just didn't stop moving. Swung right through. Well executed, selfless basketball. Leo out again to Ayers. Ayers gets the three that time. That's her second this quarter, six points for her. I have all five timeouts left, right? Thank you. Come on. Rivera to Alemian, 60 seconds to play in the first half. Hilltoppers up by six. Seven on the shot clock. They go out to Carrero. No good, Leo boxing out. And a foul, I believe. Yep, foul coming on uh, Tia Rivera. It's gonna be her second foul. Ninth foul for Durfee in the first half. 
And a one and one Leo is gonna go to the line. Hilltoppers bringing in Kira Dance, number four. And having uh, Atia sit down probably for this last 45 seconds. No, nope, don't want a chance, a third foul in the first half, I'm sure. Leo hits the first. This would cut the lead to four. No good. Oh, Gerald. That's a jump ball too. Again, kind of quick, I think. Yeah, they're not giving it any, any time for the play to happen. They're just calling it right when they see something. Yeah. Leo. Oh, it rolls off the rim. Oh. Passing tipped out of bounds. It'll be Durfee ball. That's a good defense from Gerald on Leia down low. A player that tall, you're not going to block her. You just got to make her shot uncomfortable. That's the only way it's going to work. Oh, absolutely. Because then, it, you know, if you make contact, you're going to get a whistle. Yeah, so. No way you're blocking her. So just make her uncomfortable when she goes up. Inbounding pass goes to New Bedford. That's out for three. No good. Twenty-four point eight on the clock. The inbound to Leo. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And Coach Pina gets timeout called with nineteen point six on the game clock, sixteen seconds on the shot clock. Good defense by Durfee to force that timeout. They really made it so that Leia had nobody to pass to. Trapped her in oh, the yeah. corner and there was nowhere she could go with it. And that's kind of like how Coach Smith called timeout in the first two right, minutes, yeah. you know, and what could have been a jump ball or a possession issue. Same deal here. They're really the same kind of thinking. So um, it's been a really good first half, though, so far. Hilltoppers, I like the defense. Um, I like that they've put up 12 more points yeah. again in the second quarter, matching the first quarter total. Um, I think really if there's one thing is maybe try to limit some of the fouls. They've spread them out pretty good over the first and second quarters. Haven't maxed out. They got nine. Um, and, and again, the turnovers. Both sides still having trouble with turnovers, although I do think more of the turnovers tonight are because of the defensive right. play, not necessarily just sloppy play. No, they're forced turnovers, which is good for the defense. But I think that, yeah, like you said, that's like the only negative for both sides is the fouls and turnovers. All right, the Whalers will inbound. Again, less than 20 on the clock. They get it into Gaylor and a foul. There's number 10. Hey, Monica, come back. I think it, uh, he said four. That would be Kara Dance picking up her. She was in the area. She should be picking up her first. Indeed, she does. She just came into the game, too. This is going to be two shots for Gaylor. As the Hilltoppers have reached their limit. The bouncer off the rim. Gaylord does not. This is her first trip. She does not hit the first. Second one no good as well. Look at the rebound from Sakara. Doesn't go down though. And now with 10 seconds, a chance for the Hilltoppers to get the last shot and a couple extra points. And they do get those points. Carrero. With a great first half, nine points, buzzer three, no good. What a good first half. Hilltoppers up by seven, 26 to 19 after 16 minutes of play here on Fred TV. I like what I saw, and I like that Carrero's really kind of leading the charge tonight. Uh, she's got nine points in this first half. We look back to that Stang game, and uh, she had seven, but she was held scoreless the entire second half. So I think a big key tonight is keep her going in the second half. She can double her point total and come up with 18 points. Nine more points from one player in that second half could prove to be the difference here. Right, she's, been, do she's been doing very good in the first half. If she can, like you said, double her points, keep her hot. Keep feeding her the ball. Keep, it, keep her flow going. You don't want to kill it. I think Durfee should do that, and their defense stays up. They'll come out very well in this game. You saw me pose. I apologize. <laughs> Dave Souza, you know, he put the lens in my face. I got two cameras. I don't know <laughs> <Celebrity>. <laughs> where to go. <laughs> Celebrity action. <laughs> Haven't seen Dave in a while, actually. So, 
we'll catch up. All right, folks, stick around on Fred TV. Second half's going to be great. Durfee up by seven. We'll see you on the other side of the break for the third quarter. Stick around. Honor, courage, sacrifice, pride, our city. Fall River has traditionally been in the forefront of honoring our nation's soldiers, sailors, Marines, and airmen. Vietnam veterans took the initiative to secure rights to an 80% size replica of the Healing Wall for Veterans Bicentennial Park. The names of over 58,000 fallen heroes will be engraved on the 360 foot long replica wall. 100% of the money raised benefits the building of our Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall in Fall River. Help build our wall, which is scheduled to open in 2020. The meaning, the spirit, and the value of the wall is everyone's. Be part of this exceptional, once-in-a-lifetime project. To make a donation, please visit VietnamMemorialWall.org or connect with us at Facebook.com. Okay, we're back here at the Fieldhouse third quarter. About to begin, Evan Massoud and Zach Souza with you. Whalers and Hilltoppers, girls basketball, really a good first half, Zach. Um, Hilltoppers allowed 19 points. Both sides offensively kind of got going a little more in the second quarter. Uh, but the Hilltoppers have led for 90% of this game. And uh, we'll see if they can build on their lead now. A seven-point lead to start the second half, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Their defense has given them a lot of help, too, keeping the Whalers from scoring. No, they sure are. And we can see Mac Mackenzie Carrero here. She's had a great first half. We touched, we touched on that. She's got nine points. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping that she can sustain some of her offensive uh, numbers as we head into the second half. Again, the, the game, the Stang game, she was held scoreless in the second half after a good first half. The other player, uh, Crystal Diaz, has eight points. Well, there she is. She just threw the ball away. Leo going to put it up, and it goes in. Um, Diaz has eight points, but the one she had a three ball in uh, the second quarter. It came kind of halfway through, so she was pretty quiet in the third, uh, in the second quarter rather. Let's we'll see if she can kind of let you know start heating up a little bit. Uh, first foul here of the second half is going to be on Resendiz for the Whalers. Diaz, there she is. That was definitely tipped by. Resendiz, another. We've seen a number of those yeah. tonight, where they've gotten tipped uh, on the way to the basket from an outside shot or on an outside shot. So the defenses have both been quite good. That's a bad pass. So Leo couldn't pick it up. It was a low pass. Good bounce in the paint. <laughs> nice job. Carrero is into double digits. Only player on either side in double digits. She's got 11 points. Yeah, they got to keep giving her touches. She, what she's doing is working right now. She keeps getting good looks and keeps making them. It's been good balance, though. Right. I mean, the Hilltoppers have six players with points. On the other side, the uh, Whalers have, uh, looks like, seven players with points. Yeah, seven players. And, I mean, Resendiz, Resendiz is a captain. She's a forward. They've held her to one free throw, nothing from the field. I mean, that's a yeah. win. That's a win defensively right there. Second foul of the game for Anoush Alimian. First of the half for the Hilltoppers. And it puts at the line, gosh, I can't see the number, that's number 24, that's Gordon. Gordon in three free throw attempts has missed all three. And another foul. Ooh. Oh, two Hilltoppers going down. Catherine Callahan picking up her third foul. Loose ball picked up by Ayers. Trying to go underneath. Yeah, so the Whalers with uh, seven players in the book with points. So, again, both sides really kind of spreading it out. Uh, Ayers leading the Whalers with just six points, and that's uh, the two three balls she had last quarter. Blocked. All ball. The height advantage for Leo, just too much. 
And Atia Rivera getting called on a foul as she went diving in for that ball. Her third foul, three fouls in the first two minutes of this half for the Hilltoppers. Got to try to cut it back a little bit. That's three in a row, literally in like a minute. Tipped. Oh. The official in the right place at the right time. And so was Gary Leet. <laughs> <laughs> Wheeler's inbound to Leo, out to Gordon. Whistle. Moving screen, I think. Yep. Yeah, good call. So Leo getting tagged with her second foul. Second for the team. The inbound to Diaz. Nice bounce back to Callahan. Going to try to work the opposite side. Oh, it went around. Good coverage right there from uh, is Rivera going to put up a three, and it's wide to the right. Carrero basically stopped two defenders to allow Callahan to get around the other side. It was like talking about putting a little roadblock yeah. there. That worked out quite well. The official giving uh, one of the assistant coaches for the Whalers an earful, Zach Gillette. to sit there and watch. <laughs> She's not taking nothing from No. Me. I like it. I, I, I really like it. Well, the assistant coaches are not supposed yeah. to talk or get up. You know, the head coaches have some leniency, but that's it. Blocked. And the Hilltoppers come away. Rivera sparked that takeaway, and it is taken away from her. Diamond Gerald will inbound with 17 seconds on the shot clock. A lot of uh, stoppages in play to start this third quarter. It's been a long two and a half minutes. Underneath the Diaz, can't put it up. She's gonna get her own rebound. Loses it on the second attempt. 28-21. Hurling it to the opposite side, that's Resendiz. And makes its way back to Ayers. Resendiz calling for it again. She is all alone. Now Rivera quickly there. They're going to go underneath. Oh. And a foul on Anusha Lemian, it appears. And if it is her, it'll be her third. It is. And that's going to be two shots as Kennedy Franklin. And head to the line looking for her first basket. Franklin, I believe, is another freshman. She is. High arc. Looks really good. And just couldn't get it to fall. A little wraparound scoop and out of the basket. Shot number two off the top of the glass. Leo there for the putback. No good. She's going to get it back again. Tipped out. Who wants it? Oh, what a nice oh. job. Resendiz kept that in by sheer miracle. Wow. <laughs> and then on the other side, Franklin gets a foul on it. There was a push. Third foul for the Whalers. Her first in very limited time. She's going to sub out now, it appears. Hilltoppers inbound. Just four points combined over these first four minutes, basically, of this third quarter. It has not been a pretty start to the second half. Resendiz met with a lot of defensive pressure. Gets it out to, is that Ayers? That is Ayers. Going underneath, no good. Jimon Gerald going to get called on a foul. Durfee's fifth foul. We're only halfway through the third. Gerald's second. Leo inbound. Another foul. And I think Gerald's going to get it again. No. That's on uh, Soares. Soares picking up her second. And that will result in two shots. Leo at the line. One for two so far.
Leo misses the first. Coach Penis seems a little stressed on the sidelines, pacing. Coach Nice Guy always, always gives me time before the game, always very positive, as is, you know, Coach Smith here, new, new to Durfee. Um, he's been so positive every time I've talked to him, and uh, that's always something. Regardless of the record or how the team's playing, you need that from a coach. Otherwise, the team's going to get down. I mean, you know as a yeah. player how important that is. Yeah, your team feeds off of their coach. You know, if their coach is down and their coach is whatever about it, just doesn't care anymore, it's going to rub off. Coach Pina calls timeout. Players are going to think, oh, why are we going to play for someone who doesn't care right now or is mad or is so out of it? They got to keep it positive while still being, you know, assertive. And yeah, they got to keep themselves positive, though. And that's, I mean, that's the leadership part right. of it. You know, yeah. as we're dealing with high school kids, he said to me before the game, what it comes down to is it's 14, 15, 6 year old girls playing against 14, 15, 16, 17 year old girls. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is, you know. Um, so. That's a quick timeout for Coach. But uh, seriously, yeah, I mean, always very positive, very energetic. Um, whenever, I mean, this is his fifth season leading the charge. You know, this is my seventh doing basketball. So, um, you know, the majority of the time that I've been around, he's been the coach. So, you know, it, it's always nice when you have someone. Most, of, I'd say 99% of the coaches that, you know, I've run into, uh, even first time, you know, covering coaches, Always been great to talk to. You know, you know, only once in a while you run into a couple that maybe just don't like to talk or don't like their pregame routine interrupted, and they don't give you much. You know, they kind of give you the Belichick treatment. Vasquez for two. <laughs> the Belichick treatment. Well, I mean, really. I, I'm not going to name names, but there's, right. there's maybe two or three that I've run into, and I have to like. That's for three. A new Shalimian. Her first from downtown. I have to, like, <laughs> pry it out of them, you know? It, like, like literally, like, tweezer, pry the information <laughs> out. <laughs> you know, it, and most of the time that comes from the visitors who are not used to seeing, right. you know, here at Durfee and, and at Diamond, I mean, well, yeah. please, they know who we are. <laughs> but um, sometimes the visitors, it, there's been a couple that, yeah, not not very, not fans. <laughs> well, no, it's not so much that they just don't give you much. You know, I'm trying to just create conversation. I need some notes. Like, I haven't seen your team all year. Tell me about your team. What's working? What's not? That's usually if I haven't seen the team yet at all. Yeah. I mean, I do some research, obviously, but if I haven't seen them play, I like to hear from the coach directly. What's working? What's not? Mm -hmm. What are you looking to improve upon? That's like my first question usually. And man, sometimes it's just like worse than pulling teeth. Trying to get an answer. It's like, well, give me something. I'm just not going to be able to talk about your team. Yeah. I mean, I, if you want, I'll just call numbers all day. <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, really, help me out. You know, the high school coaches don't hold press conferences three times a week like the pros do. So, uh, you know, right. I, I, I get my information, most of it, on one-on-one -on -one interaction. There's only so much that can be printed online mm -hmm. or in, in video. You know, and talk to the coaches before the game. That's the bottom line. So... Leo picks up her third, fourth for the Whalers. And she's going to take a seat. Durfee up by 10. The putback nicely done by Franklin. Her first basket of the night off the bench. And a good job on the, you know before that, too, keeping it in. I did not see the number. There were a lot of players down there. But somebody jumped out of bounds and swatted it back in to keep the Whalers' possession alive. Alimian loses it. And it'll be Callahan inbounding the ball. Yeah, good little run there, Durfee with the, the three ball and then the, the deuce in the paint. A quick 5 nothing run that, uh, you know, put him up by 10. Now it's eight points. Off-balance shot from Mayette into the game now. Couldn't get it to fall. Oh, that's, that's going to be a block, it looks like. Yeah, Carrero going to get charged on her third. Already eight fouls for the Hilltoppers, and I'm 
hoping for their sake that the foul trouble doesn't come back to bite them in the fourth quarter. Already putting New Bedford into bonus with more than 10 minutes to play in the game. Franklin at the line. First one misses, everybody napping. They forgot it was a one and one. Gotta pay attention to that. Yeah, that's heads up basketball, knowing the situation. Oh. Oh, and they. Timeout called by Coach Pina. You want to travel, I Zach? I think there you're was a couple missed still, travels. You're yeah. still motioning. There was a wow. lot of movement yeah. in that little two foot corner. Let me. <laughs> I don't know. I think they missed one there, but a lot of feet around. You probably can't see it. But I definitely think they missed one. Well, the timeout was granted, and the timeout stands with 2.10 to play in the third. Durfee up 33 to 28. Eight fouls for them in this third quarter alone. Four for the Whalers. And they have uh, Durfee with three, uh, four players, four starters with three fouls. Uh, that's living dangerously. If Coach can get through... Coach can get through the rest of the third quarter with very limited foul trouble. I'm sure he'd be very happy about that. You definitely don't want to get the 10 fouls with still the whole fourth quarter to play. You'd put yourself in some serious well, yeah. pressure. Especially, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. One of our officials checking out the camera. <laughs> Gary Lead over there looking to see what we're seeing, uh, what you're seeing, folks at home. That's for three from the corner. No good. In and out. Nice rebound from Mayette. Stretching to get there. Alemian quickly covered up back to Callahan. Callahan out to Carrero. Back to Alemian. 15 on the shot clock. She's going to take it herself. No good. The rebound to Ayers. Thrown away, should be Durfee ball. Took a while for the whistle to blow too. A couple extra ticks off the clock there. Three seconds went by before the whistle and it was clearly already out of bounds. 90 seconds to play in the third. Durfee with possession on the turnover. Kind of been a weird quarter. Very little happening early. A lot of points in the middle and now nothing over the last minute or so. Kind of strange. Double dribble. It'll be Durfee ball. Should be Durfee ball. I think it was a double dribble on Durfee before the steal. I think it was just a late whistle. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. I looked down at the book for a split second. I see New Bedford breaking. Yeah. I can only imagine it's them that double dribbled. Thank you, Zach. Timeout, coach wants to, oh, Coach Smith not gonna get the timeout and instead the ninth foul for the Hilltoppers. Ugh. Putting himself into trouble here. Uh-huh. Soares with three fouls all off the bench. At least it wasn't one of the starters for Coach Smith. And Kennedy, I'm sorry. Yeah, it is Kennedy, Kennedy Franklin that is. Franklin at the line. Oh, and that one falls the other way, too. She's missed all four of her free throws, all four opportunities coming here in this third quarter. And that was one of those 50-50. Uh, it could have bounced either way, but you know how it goes. <laughs> when you're not hitting them, they don't fall. And New Bedford doing a good job, though, keeping their foul numbers down. I think they went into the second half with eight fouls, and they've kept their foul numbers very low. You're right, it was eight first half yeah. fouls and they've only had four in this quarter. Actually, they've had four in each quarter. They've really spread it out. Um, Hilltoppers though with nine, yeah, definitely in, in some trouble. There's the fifth though for the Whalers and it's the second on Monica Ayers. Callahan gets it to Carrero. Carrero, gonna set up here. Rivera, good pass to Diaz. Now back out to Carrero, all alone. <laughs> 14 points for her to lead all scorers. It's back to a 10 point game. And that was so well designed for her to get back open. Stepped out of bounds. A 
three tenths of a second will be the differential between the game clock and the shot clock here. Hilltoppers, I'm sure, would like to take the last shot and go up by at least 12 here. Gonna go out to Rivera. Oh, Rivera lost it. She would have been all alone for a three. Everybody playing, playing back. Callahan for two. And it's 38 to 26. Another steal. Five seconds on the clock. Two seconds. Carrero lets it fly. It's tipped. No good. Another 12 point quarter for the Hilltoppers. And more importantly, they held the visitors to just seven points. Durfee got their offense rolling towards the end of the third quarter. They got it going fast and. They sure did. Uh, I mean, they allowed, what, three, sh three shots from the field for New Bedford. Um, all the three different players, and then the one free throw was Franklin just you know, about 60 seconds ago. Um, so, Durfee with a couple clutch threes in that quarter. Again, Carrero with 14 points. She's leading all scorers, so not too bad here. I think Coach Athletic Director Buston has an update. What do we got? Oh, you were just coming to check the book. <laughs> New Bedford boys leading Durfee with four minutes to play. So 12-point lead for the Whaler boys at home. So a good third quarter, though. The Hilltoppers have built their lead up to 12 points. It's the largest lead of the night. 38 to 26. That's what you're going to do. Now it's a matter of closing out. They're hitting some key shots. This was something that was not happening against Stang. They're creating defensive pressure. I mean, when you hold your opponent to seven points in two different quarters, under right. 10 points in any quarter is a good defensive output. And that comes from pressure, turnovers, missed shots, just like that. So th this is exactly the kind of high-paced basketball that the Hilltoppers and Coach Smith has been wanting to see. The only downer right now are the foul, the foul troubles for Durfee, really. If they can, if they can try to stay away from the silly fouls, right, and just keep playing your game, keep playing the game clean, you know, they're going to be able to probably close out a win here, which would be a huge win. Callahan with a couple baskets in that third quarter, giving her five points now. Alemian with the three, she's got five points. Uh, Diaz was quiet in that third quarter. She still has eight for the game. Resendiz was held scoreless in that quarter and still has nothing from the field through three. That's quite a job for by the Hilltoppers defense to basically take her out of the equation. And nothing from Ayers in that, in that third quarter either. She's an outside threat and she could not hit anything. Carrero for three and now 17 points. A 15 point lead for the Hilltoppers. She is just on fire in the second half, too. Yep, that was her third from downtown. She's two for three at the line. She's got three from inside the arc and three from outside. Alemian. Now, how was there no foul there? I mean, Leo practically right, body checked right her. Right over her, I too. mean, for crying out loud. Yeah. So where's the foul there? That that's that's. Come on. Those are the inconsistencies, and 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 maybe it's a matter of. I mean, they're a little closer to the play than we are, but there's body contact. Yeah. This is a non-contact sport. I mean, I've seen a little slap on the hand get called as a foul. So right. what, what is... <laughs> yeah, where, where's the line? Exactly. I mean, Coach kind of put his hands up like, I think he was looking for one yeah. too. It sure looked like there was a foul. That foul right there could easily would put New Bedford at six and could get Durfee to the line with six fouls on New Bedford. 
I mean, could just add to Derfy scoring. It would do them well. But well, exactly. I mean, keep it both ways. Well, I mean, look at it this way. You know, you got a 15-point lead. I could, see if it was a two-point game and that and that wasn't yeah. getting called, I think there'd be a little more protest <laughs> about it. I right. mean, it's still, to me, that is a foul. Uh, there's a height advantage. There was contact. Yeah. You can't contact them when you're going to the basket. You yeah. cannot prevent a player from taking a shot. If you impede that process, it's a foul. Should be a no question foul too when they're in the air and you're yeah, really. them. They're in the air. They're defenseless pretty much. Yeah. Well, Jeffrey going to get to inbound it. So I guess it's kind of they keep possession at least. Yeah. Oh, Not taken away. I know, right? <laughs> Ayers came flying in. You're going to go coast to coast. Actually, that, is that 21? I think that's Furland. Yeah, that was Furland, 21. actually. And Durfee gets it back. So, again, trading turnovers. The key is that Durfee has been able to score when they've taken the ball away. That's kind of been the difference here tonight. When New Bedford's gotten those second chances, they've had trouble. They've had trouble getting the points. Durfee, when they've stolen the ball back, they've made it count on a number of occasions. And again, that's this is kind of, this reminds me a little bit more of what the Somerset game was like, which was a really good win for Durfee, uh, their second game of the year. And it was a road game too. And that was, like I said, their only win. Um, but this is as close to that game, I'd say, in terms of the level of intensity, hitting some clutch shots, everybody getting involved, decent defense. I mean, this is as close to that as we've seen basically since that game. Yeah, they have not slowed down at all since the first since the first quarter. That's a back. Yeah, it is. I don't know how that's not back. <laughs> yeah, I don't I didn't see a tip. The ref saying it was a tip, but yeah, I, I mean if if so, then it was like you know maybe an ingrown fingernail that <laughs> tipped it. <laughs> yeah, that was. I don't know. That's. I think they missed that one yeah, too. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I think with the tips, you're kind of going off of you know the sound effect of yeah. it because obviously it's very hard to see. Yeah, tough break for New Bedford. Three chances and the Whalers can't put it in. They're going to get a fourth chance now, and they finally get a basket, and it's Monica Ayers who puts it in. Timeout for Coach Pena. It's a 13-point game. And while we have that timeout, we'll let you know the road ahead. I hear Jake to my left. Evan, it's you. We're, we're live. That's right. So the Hilltoppers um, have a tough road here over the next couple games. Hosting tonight, but then they're going on the road for two. They have to go to BR, top team in the state, as usual. And then next Friday, they're at Dartmouth before coming home uh, to finish the season. They'll have six of their last eight games will be at home. So that's nice. Uh, for New Bedford, they are here tonight. They just came off of a uh, six-game homestand, which includes their holiday tournament. They uh, had some home games there. So uh, they're away tonight. They host Dartmouth next week. And then they hit the road and go to Barnstable next Friday. That's a tough matchup, too. Barnstable's always tough. So that's kind of what's coming up for both of these teams. Some tough games on the schedule for sure. Trying to get around everybody. Some good defense from the Whalers. Callahan, basket, good. On another turnover, it turned into points for Durfee. Put up for two, no good. Other side, the put back from Franklin, good. Forty-three to thirty. Carrera wants another. That's off the back of the rim. Atia Rivera there for the rebound. Callahan thought of putting it up, instead gets it to Alemian. Now back to Callahan in the paint. No contact or foul apparently there either. Nothing getting called on the left side of the court. <laughs> I think the refs are just clocking it in right now. Maybe. <laughs> Around the back, Callahan one-on-one. -on -one. 
Can't put it up. Alemian is there for the rebound. She can't put it up. Going to get it back again, and it doesn't and go. It, A third time. Oh, Are you kidding me? Come. I think the refs in the stands thought there was a foul on the fourth on the third try. See a lot of hands going up. Yeah. Leo on the other end for two. Diaz off to the right. No good. Resendi's coming back. Feeding Leo again. Left all alone. And she's gonna do that all day. It's a nine-point game with three and a half to play. Four quick points for the Whalers as Leo and Rivera were going at it. And Leo obviously with the clear height advantage. Now we talked about fouls, interestingly enough. That is just the first foul of the fourth quarter, four and a half minutes in. And it's gonna result in two shots for Durfee. First one misses. Uh, the foul's on Franklin, her second. Diaz missing the first. This is her only her second trip to the line. The first one came in the first quarter, and she missed both shots at that time as well. So 0 for 3, make it 0 for 4. Tough night at the line for Diaz. That goes out of play. Tip should be New Bedford ball. Diaz coming out. Diamond Gerald coming back in. She's had a nice night off the bench. A basket, some good defensive plays. Going to Franklin in the corner. Now getting it back out to Ayers. Look out for Leo. Oh, stolen. That's taken away. And a jump ball. When Rivera lost that ball, I definitely heard a slap, and I don't think it was the ball. It sounded like skin to skin. Timeout for Coach Smith and the Hilltoppers. So we let you know where these two teams are going next. Here's what's coming up on Fred TV this week. We have uh, girls basketball. We're planning to be at Diamond on Wednesday, weather permitting. We haven't seen the Lady Bengals yet. And um, they're facing off against Tri-County on Wednesday. And then on Friday, we're here. Uh, we teased this last week. DC TV from Dartmouth is coming down because Jeff Karen's Indians are coming into town. And um, so we're kind of doing a co-op there. Our crew with their their crew running the truck and whatnot. So multicam co-op between two stations should be a lot of fun. Looking forward to that. The Durfee boys lost 66 to 51. 66 to 51 in New Bedford to the Whalers. So a tough loss on the road for the Durfee boys. But the girls in command here. I mean, a nine point game is, is still a lot of basketball, 258 to play, but a nine point lead pretty good. Hilltoppers just gonna keep doing what they're doing and close it out. That's really the bottom line. They've had a lot of success tonight. Only five points this quarter to New Bedford's eight. So they're not hitting as many baskets as they could or as they have throughout the game. Gerald can't get that one to fall, but Carrero there for the rebound. Almost thrown away. You saw Leo cheating back in. Play defense. Play defense. Out to Gerald, top of the key. Now back to Carrero. That wasted 10 seconds off the clock. Now 15 on the shot clock. India Cody. Seems to be the plan though to just burn the clock a little bit. Atia Rivera, long on the three, hits the rim, a fresh clock. The Hilltoppers come away with it. Now Rivera puts <laughs> it up for two. Wow, nice pass. That was gutsy, nice pass, pa from gutsy pass for sure. Yeah. Jump ball, it's back up to an 11 point lead for Durfee. Corner three, got it. Gaylor with the outside shot. That's her first basket since the first quarter. That makes it an eight point game. India Cody with the ball, gonna get it to Rivera. Six 
Seven on the shot clock. Carrero with a desperation three. It's off the basket. India Cody was there. And I think she's going to be able to keep it. Yeah, Durfee will inbound. 93 seconds to play. Durfee, I mean, they just really took over this fourth quarter. Scoring well, playing good defense, and committed no fouls yet in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's the big one. I mean, offensively, to be honest, they're actually, they got less than they've put out in any other quarter. Um, they've only put up seven points. Um, the big shot being Carrero's three ball earlier in the quarter, but they had enough of a lead, and New Bedford's missing enough shots. Yeah. I mean, New Bedford's put up two points. They put up 11 points in this quarter. Yeah, Durfee missing a lot of shots, but they're making up for it on defense. And maybe a little bit of luck with New Bedford just missing shots, but that's a bad turnover, though, right there. Leo can't get it to fall. And a foul. Offensive foul. That's a big foul going the other way. Resendi's getting her second, and it's a one and one. Diamond Gerald going to go to the line. 103 to play. Gerald misses that first one. So no second shot. 60 seconds left in the ball game. Jumper, no good. The rebound to Callahan. And a foul. Third, uh, I'm sorry, second foul on Gaylor. Callahan will shoot one and one. The game of free throws. These are the shots that matter now down the stretch. Both one and one situation. Ooh, that's that should be a flagrant foul. It's an elbow to the face. Come on, come on. The it turn. Was... Uh, and now another foul. The turnover, though. I mean, it goes Jerfy's way, but I mean that was. Come on. Yeah, coach. I don't think Coach Smith was happy about that. I mean, the arm definitely, the elbow definitely went up. There was a bit of yeah, a. That was not natural movement. There's a little extra there. So Gerald at the line again. This is the third foul for Resendiz. See if Gerald has better luck this time. Last time was only her first trip to the line. That one is good. That is a huge first shot made. Diamond Gerald has put it up to a 10 point lead again with 30 seconds. Gaylor, basket's good. Quick timeout for Coach Pina and the Whalers. Gaylor with a nice uh, couple minutes here late in the fourth quarter. Five points for her, seven total now, uh, thanks to this little burst in the fourth quarter. But Durfee's book. Durfee's side of the book, offensively, a little busier than uh, New Bedford's. And that shows with the larger lead, of course. Um, you know, in a fourth quarter where they haven't scored as many points, they've been able to, like you said, hunker down. And I think yeah. really the defense is the key here. Um, this is probably one of Durfee's best defensive games. I mean, we've seen small sample size here on, t you know, on our broadcasts, but... Um, I'm impressed. This is a major turnaround from a week and a half ago against Stang, in my opinion. Tenth foul. Third foul on Gaylor. Two shots. Automatic two shots now for Carrero. Carrero, it's two for three. Has not gone to the line since the second quarter. No good. 
Monica Ayers and Andrea Sakira subbing back in. Resendiz though coming out as well as Furland. So kind of swapping power for power there. But I think Ayers is more of a threat from outside for sure. Second shot, good. 18 points for Mackenzie Carrero. And Durfee's going to get the ball with 20 seconds left to play. And a quick substitution again. It's like Coach Pina trying to play the matchup game, yeah. defense versus offense. They're definitely going possession, possession. Yep. Loose the ball, and the Whaler's going to have it. Furland underneath to Leo. Leo quietly gets 11 points tonight. And another foul. Tenth foul, or they're already at the, the limit, I'm sorry. Fourth foul, though, for Resendiz. Carrero back at the free throw line with 5.8 to play. Already a two-possession game. That's going to make it a three-possession game. So that's it. That basically ices it. <clears throat> yeah, New Bedford just too little too late. You know, they start this a little earlier. They're probably still in the game by now. Their run just came just a little late. Yeah, and it really came, the, the third quarter is what did it for Durfee. You know, they, they really pushed at the end of that third quarter. We're looking at, I think, another foul here. Oh, it's on Durfee. Ati Rivera picks up Durfee's 10th foul, her fourth, and so we got to wait. Point seven on the clock, but before we close it out, we'll have two free throws. I just don't, I just don't see the point of fouling there. Just play off, letting the clock run out. Well, I don't think it was intentional. Coach is laughing. I don't think it was intentional. I think, no. you know, Atia just doesn't, it's, it's an on-off switch. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, she, she's so quick and she wants that ball constantly. She, so She goes from tip to buzzer. Pretty much. Basket's good, giving Sakara two points for the game, and that is the game. 50 to 42, the Hilltoppers. They give up quite a few points in that fourth quarter, uh, 16 to be exact. I'd say, you know, that's something to look at. Going down, you know, stamina-wise, staying, staying the whole game and really pressing. But you know, once again, they put up 12 points in a quarter. They put up 12 in the fourth, so not too bad. They did what they had to do. They had that cushion going into the fourth. If they gave up a few points, it wasn't the end of the world, which they did. They got outscored in the fourth. That's the only quarter that they lost, really. Yeah. You know, you got to win the quarters. It's like baseball. Win an inning, win three innings, win four. Each inning you win, it's going to result in a winning game, you know. So this was a great game for Durfee. Definitely a turnaround uh, from the last time we saw them. It breaks the losing streak. It's their second win of the year. But you know what? Puts them in a position here. The big three can't be written off now. They're 1-1. One one. Brockton's 2-0. and oh. And uh, you got to hope maybe New Bedford can beat Brockton. And uh, Durfee can beat Brockton. So, as we get screened here, the <laughs> custodians want to go home. It's a long weekend. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh. you know, it's okay. Hey, we appreciate you being with us tonight on Fred TV. Zach, as always, I'm glad you were around. A great crew behind the scenes. Great job tonight. So glad you were with us for Durfee's second victory of the year. A big three win against New Bedford. Final score one last time, 50-42. to 42. I'm Evan Massoud saying so long from Durfee.